Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Claudia, eat your breakfast. I'm not hungry, Mama. That doesn't matter. Eat your breakfast. You can't expect to do a whole day's work on half a glass of orange juice. Oh, all right. Ah, this is music to my ears. It's lovely to see the breakfast table turned on my esteemed wife. You have no loyalty. Claudia, eat your breakfast. Rehearsing in a play isn't work like being an architect, my esteeming husband. Eat your steaming toast. Oh, honestly. You'd think if I'm old enough to have had a baby and, and be in a professional play, too, I'd be old enough not to eat my toast. They have nothing to do with each other. What time do you have to be at the theater? Not for a couple of hours. They're doing a part in the second act I'm not in. That must hurt you. The play just falls apart at that point. Hmm. The minute I walk off the stage, poof, no play. Well, tell it to the author, with and poof. That poor author, you know, his hair is turning gray right before my eyes. Mm -hmm. He and I have an awful lot in common. Why didn't you sleep late if you don't have to go to the theater yet? Because I woke up. Because I wasn't sleepy. Because I want to play with my son for a change. He's going to forget he has a mother. He's going to get along fine without one. My point exactly, Mrs. Now, seriously, Brown. darling, you ought to get more rest. Or by opening night, I'll be a wreck. This pace is wearing me thin. Sissy. These next two hours, David, we're going to forget about the theater. Oh? We're going to enjoy your vacation. My vacation is getting along fine, thank you. You and my son. I'm starting to get positively unwanted. Claudia, eat your breakfast. Oh, Mama, you see everything. Can't I even hide a little piece of toast under an empty eggshell? Those are the same tricks I used to think were so clever, so you can't fool me with them. <laughs> oh, I wonder who that is. Probably Jim Varney, canceling your two hours vacation. I'll murder him. I'll answer and tell him to go to blazes. David, if you do... David, you won't, will you? Listen, I'll answer the phone. Sit still. Why does everything have to happen at once? David gets his vacation and I'm in a play. Little girls who want their cake and want to eat it too end up with a stomachache. I'm having a wonderful time. I just hope David doesn't feel neglected. Say, Mama, he hasn't said anything, has he? He may have whispered something into an ear of corn... But he hasn't said anything into mine. But then David wouldn't, would he? If more actresses had a husband like mine, there'd be fewer actresses, I guess. That makes sense. To you, darling. Is it Jim Varney? Well, if it is, his voice is changing. It sounded like a woman to me. Oh, I know a woman. Well, you better go talk to her and find out. She wouldn't tell me who she was. David, don't you dare leave the house. Remember, these next two hours belong to us. Answer the phone and make your dates later. Hello, this is Mrs. Norton speaking. Oh, Mrs. Norton, I'm so glad you're home. This is Mrs. Abercrombie speaking. Mrs. Abercrombie? I'm the society and theatrical editor of the Eastbrook Town Crier. Oh, yes. Well, we have a subscription to it already. Thank I you. understand that you're playing a very important part in the next play down at the Summer Theater. Well, it's uh, not an important part. It's the ingenue. Oh, <laughs> modest, and it's so wonderful to have one of our own people appearing in the theater. It's of great local interest. It is? Indeed. You'll make a celebrity of the whole town of Eastbrook. Oh. But I better tell you why I called. We go to press this afternoon for the issue that comes out on Monday, and your play opens Monday evening, doesn't uh, yes. it? Yes, Labor Day night. Well, I think it would be of enormous interest and possibly excellent for the theater, too, if we could run an interview with you for that issue of the town crier. You mean an, 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 an article about me? Precisely. Now, if it isn't asking too much, and since the time is so short, and uh, I only heard of it last night, could I run down to the car, and since I live just down the road from you, I'll be right over, and we can have a nice small chat together. Oh, well, uh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I can't well, see you Well, it'll only take a I... few minutes. But I... Oh, I... thank you so much for saying it's all right. I'll be right over. Goodbye. Mrs. Abaco... Oh, drat. Who was it, darling? Oh, honestly... Nobody we know. The world is certainly full of that kind of people. Was it Mrs. Abercrombie who lives a little ways down the road? Mm. What does she want? Oh, honestly, such foolish nonsense. Can you imagine? She wants to interview me. You? 
She says, I'm local interest. Ha, ha, ha. Isn't it a joke? <laughs> she writes a column or something for the local paper. She thinks the readers will be interested. What will they think of next? I should have told her not to come. It's a lot of rubbish. David, our two hours. Oh, she won't take that long. Well, she better not. What does she want to interview me for, anyway? The most interesting things about me aren't me at all. Some people is crazy. Mrs. Brown, you're talking about the woman I love. Mr. Norton, I'm talking about Mrs. Abbott. I agree with Mama. I hope she isn't going to ask me a lot of questions. Claudia, don't forget, she's interviewing you, not you, her. I wish she weren't. I don't see why. All of a sudden, just because I'm in a play... I have to be in a newspaper, too. You are a victim of your public. Mm. Mm, you better get accustomed to this public life. From now on, you're no longer your own master. From now on, I must live like as if in a goldfish bowl. I hope she doesn't quote your grammar. I still don't see why, if anybody wants to find out about us, they think they can walk in the house and, and just see for themselves. I'll put a turnstile at the door. Oh, there she is. Smile, darling. Always smile. Why doesn't she interview you? Nobody's interested in me. I am. Claudia, answer the door. My nose isn't powdered. Neither's mine. <laughs> Yours never is. David, where are you going? I'm beating a hasty retreat. So am I. You are cowards, both of you. Oh. Your public calls. Keep them not waiting. It's going to take exactly two minutes and no more. David, tell the baby I'll be up in two minutes. Mrs. Norton, this is so nice of you. Won't you come in? Well, of course I will. That's what I came for. But do let me look around, my dear. Oh, you're so young, and this house is so sweet. The house is much older. You don't say, oh, what a lovely setting, so simple and such good taste. Well, well won't you sit down? Oh, I'm drinking it all in so I'll be able to convey it all to my readers. You're sure they're interested? One of our own citizens? Oh, yes, they'll be interested. Interested. Seems amazing to me. Is this your first part in a theatrical production? Yes. Oh, yes. how sweet and right here in Eastbrook where we can all come and see you. Now, sit right down, my dear, and tell me all about yourself. Well, it's not Have very... Have you always dreamt of being an actress? It's too thrilling. When I was young, I rather fancied myself the Maud Adams type. Yes, I suppose... And you're I... married, too. Uh, almost a year. And we have a baby. Combining too. marriage and a career. Oh, you modern girls, you manage everything so well. Well, so far, I haven't had a chance. When to... I was young, it was all I could do to manage my home and my children. I have three, and now they're all grown up and flown in the coop. And my poor late husband is dead, so I just have to busy myself. Yes, of course. And you are you planning to uh, go on with your career? Well, I was planning Oh, to... you're so sensible. Your feet right on the ground. I dare say you'll manage both very very well. Are you going to have more children? Four more. Oh, my dear, isn't that... Did you say four? Yes, all boys. My husband's the type to have boys. He's an architect. Y you mean architects can design their own children? Oh. <laughs> oh, well, my dear, this is too thrilling. I can't tell you how proud we Eastbrookers are to have you in our midst. Now, look, Mrs. Abercrombie, do you really think it's necessary to print all this? I mean... Dave and I are fairly new here, and we wouldn't want people to think Oh, we... you're going to be very prominent citizens. Oh, yes, I understand your husband is designing the new school building. Well, he's drawing up the plans now. He's terribly talented. And he has delicious taste in wives. Well, if that's everything you want to know... I, I won't take up a moment more of your time, but I do want to send the photographers over sometime today to take some pictures of your house and you with your baby and uh, with your husband. Do you want to take pictures, too? My husband wouldn't dream your of that... Your public, all your friends, though you may not even know them, are going to cry to know all about you. Now, we must have photographs. Well... Oh, you're delightful. Don't ever let anything change you, my dear. Well, I'll try. Oh, this house is just too, too charming, and what a setting. Oh, I wish I were young again. Well, it's been lovely, and you've been very kind to let me drop over and interview you, and it's been such an interesting interview. Oh, and just one thing I forgot. Yes? Uh, how old are you? Nineteen. <laughs> Oh, a woman's never too young to be younger, is she? Oh. <laughs> Ta-ta. Ta-ta yourself. Hey, has the dragon left? 
Dragon? Are you talking about Mrs. Abercrombie? I just saw her out the window, and I'm talking about Mrs. Abercrombie. Well, I don't think that's a very nice way to talk, David. After all, she was sweet enough to come over here and interview me. What? Well, she didn't have to, did she? She was really very sweet. Oh, adorable. I particularly liked her blue hair. David! Now, you mustn't take this attitude towards people. Being interviewed is a very important part of any actress's career. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to face that now. Um, come again? Oh, and David, darling, the photographers are coming over this afternoon sometime. You will, uh, shave before they come, won't you, darling? I'll shave my entire skull, but I'll not pose for any pictures. But, darling, your husband is, well, somewhat important, of great interest to an actress's fans. Mm. I don't know what you're so impatient about. You told me to be nice to Mrs. Abercrombie. It wasn't my idea to be in this play either, but now that I'm in it, I'm in it up to the hilt. And I must put up with the inconveniences and the publicity and... But uh, must I too? You know, I wonder if I should have my hair set before the photographers come. I'll break your neck and you can have that set. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> your hair's good enough for me, so it's good enough for any old photographer. Is it good enough for you, darling? Well, it was until about three minutes ago. David, you dope. Do you think this one little interview turned my head? Well, it's such a light little head. Wouldn't take much to turn it. The only direction it would ever turn in, darling, is yours. You know, I wish I'd said that to Mrs. Abercrombie. Why don't you telephone her? Maybe I should. Because during the interview, I didn't have a chance to tell her anything. She did all the talking, all of it. Mm -hmm. Claudia, come here. Come take, here, young woman. David, take that look out of your eyes. Come here. Ouch, David. Hey, what are you doing, you? Ah, I'm giving you Ouch. something to tell Mrs. Abercrombie. Oh. <laughs> Call her up and tell her your husband has just given you one whale of a spanking. Oh, darling, you're so thoughtful. How much a part of American daily life is the friendly red cooler that holds ice-cold Coca-Cola? You pause to enjoy Coke from the Red Cooler in stores, at sports events, at the movies, at clubs. Now, I'd like to call your attention to the fact that you have a white cooler for Coca-Cola in your very own kitchen. That's the family refrigerator. Keep plenty of Coke chilling in the refrigerator, and you can enjoy the pause that refreshes when you're working. You can offer refreshing hospitality to guests. Oh, uh, Mr. King, what a sweet person Claudia is. We like her. Oh, so clever, too. Our readers will just love reading about her. Uh, tell me, are you planning to see the play? Oh, indeed, I am. Well, then you could have saved yourself visiting Claudia at home. Uh, well, what do you mean? Well, from tomorrow on, the theater will be more like home to Claudia than home itself. Indeed? Indeed. So come around then, Mrs. Abercrombie. Come around tomorrow, and you'll see why. Uh, yes, I'll do that. Uh, goodbye, Mr. King. Until then, so long. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment... Think of Coca-Cola, for Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes, and ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.